it's Mike reporting for ESCCAS.com, live at the World Travel Market in London's Excel Centre. Very fortunate to meet Anton Taranenko, Director of uh, City Tourism for Kiev. Welcome to London. Oh, thank you, thank okay. you. Okay. So as a media, we were very excited that the International Exhibition Centre in Kiev was chosen as the venue for Eurovision 2017. How does the city of Kiev feel about that? So, uh, for Kiev, uh, Eurovision so contest is very important. Um, it's a chance to open it, Kiev and Kiev tourism and uh, tourism destination for all European cities and uh, I think all world. That's why it's very important for us. And uh, if you speak about uh, a venue, and uh, it's one of the important and the biggest place in Kiev and professional place, exhibition uh, center in the left side of Kiev. Yeah. Uh, that's why uh, I think it will be really great and uh, uh, incredible show. Interestingly for me, I was in Kiev in 2005 and I was on the right side of the river. So this time I'm going to be on the left side. Tell me some things. How, how exciting is the left side compared to the right side? Uh, Okay. So, uh, so uh, the left side is another start of the one of the main uh, river in Ukraine, Dnipro River, in the Kiev state on the Dnipro River. Uh, that's why it uh, will be a really interesting experience because in the left side we don't have some um, really famous events because all touristic attractions and all uh, touristic infrastructure uh, was in the uh, right side and uh, your Eurovision Sound Contest 20, 2005 uh, was in the uh, right side and now we uh, tell about the, this new Eurovision Sound Contest will be on the left side of Ukraine okay. in Kiev and the left uh, side that's why it's really interesting because all people um, have a chance to enjoy uh, Kiev and uh, touristic attraction uh, for boat trip. Okay. And uh, it will be There's a beach there as well, isn't yeah, it? There's a beach and it's uh, really. We can go sunbathing, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, you need. Uh, 20 25 minutes uh, to get to the left side the uh, venue and it's really okay. really fast and it's really interesting because you enjoy Kiev uh, on the boat trip okay just uh, actually as you've mentioned transportation this was one of my questions it's logistically it's a little difficult to get to from the right side to the left side can you tell me what Kiev is going to be doing for the tourists that are coming I heard that there's going to be water buses maybe you can tell me some things about that so it's not uh, difficult because uh, in Kiev was uh, have uh, really uh, a lot of uh, so it's no problem because Kiev has a lot of kinds of transport uh, one of the main and um, one of the popular kinds of transport is metro city and so and uh, and uh, you know, on near the uh, exhibition center, uh, when you have uh, a metro station, yes. and that's why it's not a problem. And uh, regular buses, and we include uh, and provide uh, uh, touristic buses and uh, regular buses for the all uh, direction for Eurovision main uh, places. Okay. That's why it's not not a problem. Yeah, and we we have uh, two or three kind of transport and you can get uh, from the left side or right side. Coming back to the venue a little bit, uh, we understand that there's going to be some expansion in the number of seats. Can you maybe talk about that a little um, bit and the capacity of the venue, which is the number of people that will be able to watch the shows? Uh, the number now we discuss about it and uh, our producers and uh, people who know how it's work uh, discuss about it. But I think it will be uh, 10,000 uh, places or more than. Okay. And maybe five uh, thousand, three five thousand standing, and uh, six or five thousand uh, from uh, another okay. people. I, I understand that you you can't discuss ticketing issues and and constructions of the the venue because too much because that's really an NTU thing and an EBU thing. So uh, we have to keep some secrets for May next year. That's all right. Uh, maybe you can give me some things, some secrets uh, from uh, about the venue. What what the show is going to be like. Uh, uh, what the show is going to be like, uh, we don't know, yeah. but maybe tomorrow we have a very big meeting with the uh, European Broadcast and uh, ENTO and maybe we know uh, some secrets. Okay. So, uh, 
obviously there's going to be a lot of fans coming. There's going to be two big things for them, which is Euro Village and Euro Cafe and, and, and Euro Club. Sorry, three things. Tell me some things about that. There was some controversy about one of the venues. I think it was because it, it's in San Sofia. Can you tell me what? Tell me the story behind that. So, uh, San Sofia, by the way, is a no, very beautiful place. Yes, yes. I visited it before. It's, it's a stunning church. Yeah. But anyway, tell me. It's something. really a very beautiful place, and it's uh, one of the main attractions, touristic attractions. Uh, but uh, it's, we have some um, uh, some discussion about it, and uh, now I don't have an answer from the uh, from the place where we uh, have a. Uh, official ceremony, opening ceremony, yeah. but uh, we discuss and perhaps it will be one part of the main uh, streets uh, Khrushchev in yeah. yeah. Kiev. Some parts maybe it uh, will be another place. In, I think tomorrow we hear, we know it's more. Yeah. Because I remember when I was there in 2005, the main street that you mentioned, they had stores all along that street and it worked really well. So I understand that's where you're going to have kind of like Euro Village. Is that, is that Euro right? Village, perhaps it will be from the main, one of the part of the main street, Grushatic, yeah. uh, like it was in uh, uh, Euro 2012. Yeah. Uh, yes, fun okay, zone, so. official fun zone okay. was in, uh, but uh, we have another place and uh, Tomorrow, we tomorrow. know it. Okay. Everything's tomorrow. So yeah. You had your meetings with the executives from Stockholm, uh, from Eurovision from last year. Tell me how that went and what did they advise you? Yeah, uh, the team uh, from Stockholm, Eurovision team comes in, in Kiev, if I don't mistake, it so was in August of uh, this year. And uh, we have a good uh, dis uh, discussion, a good uh, meeting and uh, uh, they really helped us because uh, they have a very really good experience and uh, really uh, general manager of events uh, and uh, the head of events department of Stockholm uh, tell a lot of uh, really good things uh, and we uh, take this experience and now we um, have a cooperation with this and a conversation we write some mails and uh, to to, to to change uh, changes of our experience. It's great that uh, the people from Stockholm come over to help you because Eurovision is such a huge event now. It's grown massively since 2005. You guys did have Junior Eurovision a few years ago, but I think you're in for a big treat next year. What this is a much bigger event. Do you feel Kiev is going to be ready and prepared in time? Yes, Kiev is ready and when... We I like your confidence. Uh, in a competition of our citizens, we present Kiev's case very well. We have um, two international airports, uh, very uh, modern uh, uh, transport infrastructure and um, really big uh, heart from Kiev and people. And we want to make this Eurovision so conscious for the European standards. Excellent. So just two final things from me. I would like you just to give some words of advice to the people that are coming for Eurovision next year. And maybe you can say hi to everybody in Ukrainian as well, if you'd like. And one other thing, when I was in Kiev in 2005, in the arena, there was a huge flag like a cardboard flag uh -huh. and everybody signed it. Uh -huh. Do you still have that in Kiev somewhere hidden away? I think we still I have a photograph of it. Oh, oh it's yeah. really good. But I think we still something uh, another, maybe yeah. something something maybe it's something modern inside. modern, maybe something I don't know. In uh, flip charts, maybe something yeah. uh, I don't know how it will be but uh, it will be really interesting. And now we uh, think about it and about a really interesting, not traditional touristic uh, places or attraction. Yeah. Something what we uh, will uh, construct and for for, for this uh, song concert. And so, so what do you? What is your main piece of advice for people coming to Kiev in May next year? May. Main piece of advice for people coming to Kiev next. Oh, okay, Kiev has a lot of touristic infrastructure. For example, the motherland, one of the highest state in the world, uh, one of the deepest metro station, uh, Arsenalna, and uh, uh, two UNESCO's heritage, uh, Sofia's uh, and. Um, uh, Kiev Pichersk Laura, that's why... Uh, Which is the one that has all the, uh, the, the, the saints underneath in the church, where you go down yeah, into the... Which yeah. one is that? It's uh, Kiev Pichersk Laura. Okay, I visited that. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's really interesting. It's but uh, interesting. now we, uh, it's a, we have some um, 
renovation of this uh, in, for, uh, in this uh, touristic attractions uh, new uh, touristic attractions near these uh, places and uh, I think boat trips uh, and May it's really amazing time in Kiev because it's uh, it's, very pretty. Uh, it's very pretty the chestnuts Kiev is a city of chestnuts yeah. and the chestnuts bubbles uh, that's why it's very beautiful okay. and what about restaurants and bars and clubs yes so the restaurant bars and clubs uh, I think in Kiev the most uh, uh, affordable uh, and uh, the most cheapest in the world. That's why I think if you have three, five, uh, maybe ten euro, you uh, must include almost everything in the restaurant. And, what, and what's, uh, what, what's some typical Ukrainian food that people could eat? Uh, you can say the Ukrainian word. Uh, so. Ukrainian borscht, yeah, so Ukrainian like salad. Right? It's like, it's no, like it's soup, it's no. Ukrainian it's, borscht, it's, it's traditional, borscht, yeah. traditional Ukrainian, and I think the borscht knows the whole world. And uh, I think Ukrainian Kiev cake. Yes. Kiev okay. cake, it's visit card of Kiev. Yeah. And uh, Kiev cutlet. Okay. I'll know Kiev cutlet. And a lot of, but we have uh, a lot of another cuisine. And I think uh, our pasta or something else, uh, very, very nice and uh, have a good price. Okay. Anton, it's been lovely talking to you. Thank you so much. Maybe you would just like to tell everybody, welcome to Kiev, but maybe you could say it in Ukrainian and then translate to English. Слушаємо до словетної України. Все починається в Києві. Євробачення починається в Києві. Цього року буде найбільш видовищне Євробачення. Приїдуть більше, ніж 40 країн світу. Ви їдете? Ми вас чекаємо. Євровізіон starts in Kiev. Well, everything starts in Kiev. More than 40 countries, visitors will come to Eurovision contest. Are you coming? And we even have one Eurovision fan with us right here in London. Welcome, Toby. I'm Toby from Israel and I'll be in Kiev too. Okay. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks. Thank you.